Right, uh, it's a Friday afternoon and we are having a session on environmental topics. So it's almost last, but certainly not least. I should just mention, if you want to dig deeper, we also convene an AI for Good discovery session on AI for climate science, and then you can dig much deeper in the same topics that you will hear today. But we have a really exciting session for you today, and we'll kick off right away. So our first speaker is Sage Linier. And she's an activist working to build an educational system to train the next generation of uh, leaders uh, who will ultimately tackle the climate solutions. Uh, she started really ground up uh, by teaching her own program as a student at UC Berkeley. She broke records for all the attendance uh, in a student-led uh, classroom, and she was uh, named as a Time magazine uh, 2023 Next Generation Leader. And today, she will call us to action and will ask, uh, will uh, pose the question, we can't let AI accelerate environmental destruction. I'm looking very much forward to hear this. Hi, everyone. Thank you. My name is Sage Lanier, and I'm a climate activist. I initially approached this conversation with no formal involvement with AI specifically, or honestly, even tech more broadly. My interest is wholly environmental, and my concern is singular. Our economy has us on track for three degrees of warming by the end of the century, which in no uncertain terms guarantees that large sectors of our society and economy will collapse and billions of people will suffer. I still can't quite understand why preventing this from happening is not the first priorities of industries and governments, but that's a conversation for another time. My engagement with the tech industry stemmed from a desire to understand who exactly are the culprits for climate change. The climate movement has very firmly latched onto fossil fuel companies, but in my mind, they only hold a, a portion of the responsibility. The burning of fossil fuels explains how climate change is happening, not why. What I want to know is why, why we're consuming so much energy. Why are emissions still increasing every year, and who is making it profitable? One of the grimmest facts I will share with you today is that none of the renewable energy we're building is helping to solve climate change. We are not replacing fossil fuels with renewables. Every year, our global demand for energy increases so much that the renewable capacity we build is only offsetting that additional growth. And every year, demand for an extraction of fossil fuels goes up. It is a proven fact that we cannot stay under 2 degrees Celsius by building renewables alone, which means we need to be decreasing energy demand, and yet it keeps increasing. In 2022, data centers consumed 2% of global energy demand, which is equivalent to the entire country of Colombia. That was before the AI boom started in November of that year with ChatGPT. Now, because of AI, data center electricity consumption is expected to triple by 2030. This massive surge in energy demand is threatening our ability to lower emissions, and in more ways than one, because it comes at the same time that demand for electricity was already surging for fossil fuel-free infrastructure, like for electric vehicles. When we take the gasoline out of cars and plug them into the walls, we obviously have to find a way to increase the amount of energy supplied to the power grid. But in the last two years, grid planners have been slammed with a long list of requests for massive amounts of power for new data centers. Utilities are telling us that as of right now, they're incapable of meeting these demands unless someone, governments, or the tech industry makes a massive investment in new power supply. Data centers for AI have set off such a large increase in American power consumption that some coal plants previously scheduled to be closed down are being delayed. These areas built enough solar and wind to replace their coal plants, and they can't now. Demand has surged so much that the renewables are just acting as a supplement to fossil fuels. Utility shortages in the face of these de data center demands are happening in almost every US market. Global grid infrastructure has been eroding for years, and many communities around the world are already experiencing increased blackouts, 
when energy demand increases the utility's ability to provide during extreme cold or extreme heat, which is now made more extreme and more frequent by climate change. In the age of AI, utilities will have to decide who gets energy for air conditioning during a heat wave. A few thousand homes or a single data center that cannot go offline. If governments and the tech industry do not put guardrails in place, building AI is going to blow a hole in our power grid and make climate change worse. Ecological econo economists have been shouting for years about externalities like this that are never included in corporations' accounting when they're deciding what is possible. They just assume that they can consume an unlimited amount of resources like energy without factoring in the cost of, to society of their consumption. We do need governments to come together to work on international oversight for the development and use of AI, and specifically for its energy consumption. Short of that, we need to pressure tech companies to commit to adding as much renewable energy capacity to the grid as they demand, operating completely grid independent wherever possible. This is the bare minimum we should expect from an industry that has the resources and influence like tech. The other day, I was talking to an AI climate researcher at MIT, and he had never heard of this company that I brought up called Sheehan. That was a good piece of context for me because I otherwise wouldn't have thought to explain this given how popular this company is amongst my generation. Sheehan is a relatively new fast fashion company, and it belongs in a category of its own. To give you a frame of reference, Zara has been under fire for years for their gross overproduction of, of clothing, inhumane factory conditions, and massive carbon footprint. Zara adds 2,000 new items to their website each month. Shein adds 60,000. They're young, and they're growing at a very scary speed. In 2023, Shein generated an estimated $32.5 billion in revenue, which was a 43% increase in just one year. And now, they're set to be dwarfed by a brand called Timu. Timu was created in September of 2022, and in 2023, managed to bring in 27 billion in revenue. We have never seen something like this company. It is the fastest retail rise in history. A June 2023 congressional report on forced labor found that one third of the packages entering the United States were from Timu and Shein. And that percentage has probably increased because Timu has not slowed down its exponential growth in the last 12 months. Shein and Timu are what happens when we allow AI to be applied to industries that are already destroying the planet and exploiting the people in their supply chains. AI enabled these companies to rapidly analyze fashion trends and consumer preferences, create hyper-personalized marketing strategies, and optimize for accelerated production cycles. These companies could not produce at such fast pace and low cost without labor exploitation, which usually includes child labor and people who live in modern slavery. The AI-driven pressure exacerbates these exploitation conditions. An expose on Shein recently found factory workers forced to pull 17-hour shifts. In one factory, they made a daily base salary of $20, which could be docked $14 if they made any mistakes. So this growing crisis already goes beyond AI's own energy demand. We have clear evidence that the usage of artificial intelligence in the private sector is accelerating environmental degradation and human rights violations. When we do the reporting, the data centers for AI get counted in the tech industry's carbon footprint, and Timu gets counted in the fashion industries. But where should accountability start and end? Most of you are here because you're excited about AI and you think it can do amazing things. If it's not already obvious, I'm not very enthusiastic. But this room is one of the only places where I'm in the minority. Being faced with data like this, with stories like this, might be uncomfortable, but it would be a disservice to my generation and the movement I represent if I didn't bring these concerns to your attention. So as much as I, and much of the general public, wish there was a way we could slow down this AI mad grab, we don't have the power to do that. So many, 
like a lot of you here, are turning to how we can harness these technologies to create social good. And I, I think that's the right thing to do, given the situation. The climate movement can't afford to let AI leave us behind, and there are some environmental problems that can only be solved with machine learning, like smart grids. Whether or not the applications of AI for good can make a difference, or even outweigh AI's own carbon footprint, is not something we have data on yet. But we do have the ability to track investments into AI. And right now, the vast majority of money is being, being put to use to making our current exploitative system more efficient. If this industry was truly committed to using AI for good, we would see significant investments directed towards solving real problems like climate change. Thank you.